Earl Glant, shop foreman here at Township Chevrolet for another how-to video for uh, Tech Talk. So today we're going to cover uh, headlights and taillights. Something that's a pretty simple fix on some cars, not all cars, but some. Uh, doesn't matter your make model, they're all really similar, I guess, in how you kind of approach it. First things you need to do is if you've got a, a bulb out, either a signal light or brake light or a park light, headlight, what have you, uh, you want to make sure you, you got the bulb you need. So uh, things aren't just generic as far as bulbs go. A lot of the manufacturers now have their own kind of kind of type of bulb or bulb end that fits into their connector. Uh, for instance, on uh, the new uh, half-ton Chevs and GMCs, you could have uh, three or four different headlight arrangements for that one make and model of truck. So you could be a, a high-intensity bulb, you could be a regular halogen bulb, you could be an LED bulb. So you'd want to call your parts place, uh, give us a call here at the parts department of township, and we will get you, uh, we'll get you the bulb that you need before you get started. Some of these bulb replacements are in depth enough that you're quite a bit of time to get to the bulb. So you, you don't, last thing you want to do is have that all ripped apart, not have the bulb that you need, and then have to go out and get the bulb, or if, you're, if that's your only vehicle, put it back together again so you can go get your bulb. So first things first, find out what bulb you need, call your parts place, get the, part, get the bulb in your hand before you get started. So what I'll do is I'll show you around the back of this headlight assembly. Uh, this one here, you can actually do the headlight bulb without uh, removing the headlight assembly. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so this is the back of the headlight assembly on this unit. Uh, you'll notice you've got your wiring harness running down here that feeds all the power going into the unit. And then you've got this cover here. So this cover, it'll actually, uh, you're gonna wanna turn this cover off and this has got a seal on the back side of it uh, that seals it, seals, keeps the weather out. So you're gonna go ahead and take that off and you'll see right behind there, there's your bulb. So there's a couple ways you can do it. You can try to take your bulb out now uh, and then take the whole wiring harness and bulb out in one piece or you can disconnect your wiring harness. And in this case, it's pretty simple. You just gotta lift up on this tab here and then push the bulb back, the uh, connector, sorry. And then that'll, it, there's not too, too much room, but there is enough room to work. And that'll get the wiring harness out of your way. So there's the wiring harness. We're gonna set that off to the side. And you'll notice there's three tabs on the back of this light. And the three tabs are locked in so what you need to do is you just turn the bulb one direction in this case it's it's uh, towards the driver's side of the truck and you go ahead and you're going to pull that bulb straight out um, sometimes you can see the damage on the bulb on this one here you can start to see some darkening on the glass there uh, where it, you know this bulb is uh, seen better days so uh, some information for the bulb is on the back of the bulb sometime you'll have the maker you'll have how many watts it is and then in this case you'll have a 90-12 bulb is actually what the bulb is and it's a 12 volt bulb 55 watt so uh, you definitely want to replace the bulb with the same uh, wattage of bulb that you took out now, in some cases you can upgrade a little bit you just don't want to put too much of a load on the uh, on the system on that circuit and uh, actually some some vehicles if let's say you're taking this bulb out and you're going to put an led bulb can actually set a a, a, a code or can even set something up on the DIC on the uh, instrument cluster telling you that there's an issue with your bulb because it's looking for a certain amount of resistance uh, in the bulb to know that the bulb is, is working. So when you put the LED light in, which doesn't have uh, that much resistance, it'll actually tell you your bulb's out when it's actually working. So um, that's why it's kind of important to replace the bulb with what the manufacturer calls for. So another thing to keep in mind is on a halogen bulb, uh, you don't want to touch uh, and on the HIDs as well. You don't want to touch the glass. The oil from your fingers, if it gets on that glass, can actually cause the bulb to prematurely fail. So the LEDs and the COBs, which is another form of LED, uh, those, those don't matter as far as the, your fingers go as much as these ones here. So you want to make sure when you take it out of the box, open it up, it'll be sitting the old one. Now it doesn't matter, it's a bad bulb anyway, but if you look, when you take, open the box up, you'll want that so you can just reach in and, and pull it out like this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this ball back in just so we can kind of keep this simple for you. So you're gonna to wanna to put it in the same orientation. You're gonna to wanna to turn that ball with the connector facing up. You're gonna to wanna to put some inward pressure towards it and you're gonna to wanna to turn that and that locks that into place. You would definitely wanna make sure that the bulb looks like it's sitting in there pro properly and all of those tabs are underneath. 
if you get the bulb in there crooked it can actually the heat can melt the housing that it's sitting in so you don't want to do that you're going to want to take this connector and put it back in the uh, housing here and line it up with the lock and tab and then just lock it into place you'll actually physically hear a click there when it's uh when it's in where it needs to be and you can actually see that the locking tab is done and you're going to want to make sure you reinstall this uh this cover here and you're going to want to turn that all the way it until you feel it stop and then now you know that unit's all sealed up and you're ready to go now i chose this side here for us to use as an example uh just because it's obviously an easy one to get at and we're just kind of every car is going to be different how you're going to get to that bulb um I chose this one because it's easy to see. Now, if you come over here and take a look, the uh, the air box is in the way on this vehicle. So in order to get at that unit, you would have to remove obviously a few things here and take this out of the way, and then you could gain access to the back side of that headlight. So just for simplistic sake, we, we use the other one there, but just something to keep in mind. Uh, you may have to remove uh, you know, some parts to get it what you need. Some, you have to remove the grill. Some vehicles, you have to remove the bumper. Um, everyone's different, but uh, the gist of when you get into the actual headlight assembly itself, however you get there, the gist of replacing the bulbs are almost always the same. Uh, another common style that you see, other than the kind of turn-in bulb like we just did there, um, some have like a, a hinged wire uh, and usually when you're dealing with that style the actual bulb itself is um, uh, the bulb itself is, is grounded through the headlight assembly uh, Phil will throw one of those picture one of those up there for you guys to have a look at so you're going to want to push down on the wire pull it away from the bulb to unhook it and it'll hinge out of the way and then you can go ahead and lift that bulb out and sometimes like I say they're grounded right to the assembly so it'll just be like a one terminal bulb and if it's not it'll be a two terminal and then you put the new bulb in same thing don't get your fingers in the glass slide it into place push down on that wire and you're going to hinge it and hook it back over and that'll be that'll be that so those are kind of the real two main ones um, you get into some of the HID ones with the with the ballasts and stuff built into the back of the bulb they have like a little uh, locking uh, a turn lock that you would actually uh, you turn it and it will unlock the bulb similar to what we have on what we just showed you there only difference is you're not turning the whole bulb the bulb stays stationary with the with the transformer but you turn the lock that holds it into place and as far as the led bulbs go they go in uh the same same way as as uh, the regular bulbs do so um maybe what we'll do now we'll go to the back of this truck and we'll kind of give you guys a quick run on how to replace a park light signal light reverse light uh assembly back there so just uh, let's have a look Okay, so now we're at the back of the truck here. We're gonna go ahead and replace a tail light or a reverse light or a signal light or a brake light. Either one, it's gonna be all the same way. Most of the half tons right from the 80s up till now are, are the same way. So this is gonna cover a lot of the trucks. It doesn't matter if it's Chev, Dodge, Ford, they're almost all the same. Uh, and it's a very similar pro process for the cars uh, and vans too. The only difference is obviously sometimes how you get to it. Where this is exposed here, some of this stuff may be in the trunk underneath some of the covering or the matting uh, and instead of these have screws in them uh, torque screws some will have just a plastic fastener or a Christmas tree plug they'll call them uh, that they will push in to hold that into place so what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and remove this tail light and what we're going to do is going to remove the two 15 mil uh, torque sockets that hold it into place so once you do that you can see the tail lights obviously loose there's a couple of clips here that hold it into the body on the front side. So you're going to want to go ahead and just give that a pull. And they will come out. You'll need some force to do it. You don't want to bend them. You want to pull that straight out on this. Um, if you bend it, obviously you crack or break the glass. So you want to do that. Uh, when you flip this over on the back side, you'll see there's your three bulbs. Sometimes there'll be a main connector that the um, that will hook all the bulbs together and it'll be kind of a separate little uh, harness but in this case it's three separate ones so just for the ease of working what we're going to do is i'm going to go ahead and remove all these bulbs by twisting them out and obviously there's a lot of dirt and stuff in here because inside the box all the dirt from the tire gets up there so i'm going to go ahead and remove the three bulbs now this truck doesn't have a tail light out or anything but i just we're just doing this for the purpose of the video so all the bulbs obviously look good uh, the number for these bulbs will be on it as well. They're a little hard to read uh, on the glass, but uh, like this one here is a 744 bulb. 
This is a 912 bulb, so you can't get the numbers off them, but they're hard to read. Um, when you replace the bulb, these ones aren't so fussy uh, as far as the oil goes in your skin, but obviously keep it as clean as you can. If you've got some gloves on, great. Use them if you don't. Just make sure your hands aren't full of oil and grease. It'll just help the life of the bulb. And you want to just, you want to make sure the terminals in here look really good too. So uh, sometimes, especially with all the, all the water and the slush and the salt coming off the tire, especially with the half tons, because I can, I can physically see the tire in through these holes here. So there's obviously going to catch some debris from the road through there. So you want to make sure those are good. Obviously there's seals there to kind of seal it against the taillight. If uh, you've got any moisture in your tail, and I've seen them come in here, look like a fishbowl, there'll be lots of water in here. Obviously water and the hot bulb don't mix, you're gonna have a lot of blowing. So if, uh, blowing bulb. So if you wanna, if, you, if you've got water in here, obviously the seals could be an issue. Maybe someone has previously replaced a bulb and they haven't uh, uh, put the gasket back on or got stuck to the light and it fell off or what have you. So you might wanna take a look at that and make sure that's okay. Um, it could be the actual housing itself could be cracked or split this one's good everything's good and dry um, so once you uh, once you get your new bulb you're going to go ahead and make like i say make sure the terminals and stuff are clean make sure there's no corrosion in there everything looks fine here you're going to go ahead and put that light in and before you go ahead and obviously put this all back together you know same as the front too uh, be good to to try it and make sure everything's working. So I'm just gonna go up front here. The key will have to be on to check the uh, signal light bulb. And uh, the park lights are on there. And there's your brake light. Uh, the reverse light, you'd have to start the car to have that. Reverse light's working. So now we know we're good to go ahead and, and put this all back together again. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you put the light back in obviously the same direction, make sure the lights go the same way. This one kinda of wants to lay like it wants to go in, so it shouldn't be a big deal. I usually start with the closest one, that way you got, it just gives you a bit more room to work. You're gonna push each bulb in, same as the headlights we did before. You're gonna push it into place, put some downward force on it to make sure that seal's good and seated, and lock it in, and then this little uh, marker light here. These are the clips I was talking about that, that hold into these holes here. So that's what you're pulling against. So obviously when you get dirt and stuff like that, it makes it even harder for this to kind of kind of come out. So you're gonna have to use some force. Same as when you go to put the lights back in again, you may have to use a little bit of force to make that go. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that a little, a little bunt. It didn't slide in too bad. Then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna start these screws in again. Now you gotta remember these are tight, tightening into plastic, so you don't wanna over tighten these. I'm using this gun here, I use it a lot. If you've got one of these at home, sometimes these can get away on you and you can strip the screws or strip the head of the screws. So you just wanna make sure you put a little bit of tension on it, but nothing too, too major. Like I said, the only difference between doing some of the cars, uh, sometimes the cars and the vans will actually have a hatch. You don't have to remove the tail light. You can just remove the hatch and reach your hand in and twist the bulbs out. They essentially sit in there the same way. Um, and some of the other trucks and vans, instead of having those screws, they'll just be like a push plug. So you'll see it's almost, uh, you'll have a, a flat plastic. I get Phil to throw a picture of a push plug up, but you just uh, take like a, a flat screwdriver or a pair of uh, needle nose or, or side cutters and you get in there and just pull the center section out. When that center comes out, it allows the inside to collapse. So then you can take that plug out of there and then you can remove this out. So um, other than that, pretty much that's, that's replacing the ball for the most part. Just make sure your hands are clean. Uh, when you're taking it apart, just take notes of where, you know, what you're removing and what you're taking apart. So when you put it back together, you just do the reverse order. It's not too, bi not too big a deal. Make sure you've got your bulb that you need and the right bulb before you get started. Cause if you're into a bit of work, we got to remove an air box or a bumper or a grill or something like that. Then you want to make sure you get everything you need to, f to start the job and finish the job and obviously test it. If you replace the bulb and uh, the, it doesn't work, well, then you've got a circuit problem, uh, which could be something more serious. Could be something simple as a fuse, which we discussed in the last video. So if you want to know how to do that, just jump back to the last video and uh, you can find how to replace the fuse. So you can check your fuses for your, for your lights. Um, you might have a bad wiring issue somewhere or a bad switch that turns the light on. So that's a whole other thing altogether. So it's just kind of a quick rundown how to replace bulbs. Any questions or comments, just drop them down below. And uh, if you guys have any ideas on some future videos to do with how to's, just let us know and uh, we look forward to seeing you. Thanks. Hey guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. 
Uh, your guys' input really helps us, you know, try to put some videos that everyone wants to see out. Uh, share it all over Facebook, and uh, let's get uh, let's get these videos rolling. See if we can get some cool stuff out. See you next time.